EQ is hands down one of the most powerful tools that you have access to in the studio, and yet I see beginners all the time getting it wrong and destroying their mixes in the process. I wanna help you avoid that in today's video, but make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I have a private link to a private masterclass on mixing vocals. You're welcome in advance. Now, mistake number one is not cutting before you boost. Beginners are notorious for grabbing an EQ and just boosting everything to the max. Please don't do this, especially if you are just starting out. If your vocal is too muddy, it doesn't need more top end, it needs less mud. There is totally a time and a place for boosting, but only if a sound truly needs it. A great way to know if something needs cut is to close your eyes, listen to the sound, and think of what needs cut and not needs boosted. For example, a lot of beginners will grab an EQ on vocals and say they need more high end, which might not actually be high end, they might need less low mids. If you go into it with the mindset of cutting before you boost, you're gonna be able to find frequencies, clean up mixes, and get better mixes overall. When I started cutting before I boosted, did anything on an EQ, my mixes started to drastically get better in half the time. My tracks weren't fighting for space in the mix because I had cut things that just didn't need to be there. Now, mistake number two is ignoring the cue. The cue is how wide the EQ curve is when it's grabbing frequencies. For example, if you set 4K on an EQ, if you have a wide cue, it can cut things all the way down to 1K and up to 6K and like a big smiley face. The higher the cue number, the narrower the band gets. And the lower the number, the wider it gets. And you can get really aggressive with this if you want to, boosting almost everything here in the top end. But overall, a narrower EQ is great for cutting specific frequencies and a wider EQ is great for making big scoops and big boosts and things like this. The Q is just as important as the frequency knob and the gain knob in your EQ, but most beginners ignore it because they just don't know how to use it. Here are two main ways I like to use the Q when using an EQ to mix anything at all. Number one is surgical EQ. With a narrower Q, you're able to grab specific frequencies and cut or boost just those specific frequencies. This is great for resonant frequencies build up in like, let's say an electric guitar, vocals and things like that. Now be careful with this because if you find yourself cutting too many frequencies, you might actually have a problem at the recording and not necessarily an EQing problem. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for that link because that masterclass shows you everything you need to do to get great sounding recordings before you get into the mixing stage. And now the second way I like to use the cue is for scoops. I love scooping an electric guitar or bass, especially in the metal genre. And sometimes I like to scoop the mids out of toms to give it that like crispy yet boomy feel. A lot of times when I make aggressive mix decisions like this, it doesn't sound good in solo, but yet it sounds good in the context of the mix. And really at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for. Now this leads me to my third mistake, which is not using surgical EQ properly. If you do know what surgical EQ is, just like I explained a second ago, it is cutting very specific frequencies to eliminate resonances and things like that. Now, what I find a lot of beginners do is they grab an EQ and they start sweeping through the frequencies trying to find problems. Now, grabbing an EQ and sweeping through the frequencies to train your ears on what certain frequency bands sound like is great. You should definitely do that. But if you're using that technique to find problems, I promise you, you're not gonna find any, you're just gonna create them. You want to first train your ears on what it sounds like and then think, did this sound harsh before I started sweeping through the frequencies? You want to first listen to a track before you go any farther with an EQ. I promise you, if you boost 4K on just about anything, it's going to sound awful. 4K is a very harsh frequency. And a lot of beginners will grab it and think, oh, this sounds awful when I boost it by 10 dB. Of course it's gonna sound bad because you boosted 4K by 10 dB. But yet cutting it entirely is not the right answer either because not having any 4K in a mix at all is gonna leave you with a mix without any presence whatsoever. You want to first train your ears properly and then use that skill to cut frequencies intentionally. So I have a vocal that sounds like this. In the heavens high. And now if I boost 4K. I, in the valley low, you're with me where Obviously that sounds bad. But if I cut that entirely, it's going to eliminate all the presence out of that vocal as well. Take a listen. Where I go. In the depths of the sea, your love is always with me. It sounds super scooped and just unnatural. Attenuating that frequency would help, but cutting it entirely is not helpful at all. And boosting it by 10 dB is obviously going to sound awful. In the depths of the sea, your love is always with me. 
Jesus, you're the reason I sing The heavens high and the valley low You're with me wherever I go now, beginner mistake number four is using their eyes. Now, this is a really tough one for me because I disagree with a lot of the YouTube producers out there saying that you should never use your eyes at all. I disagree with that, especially if you're a beginner. You should boost frequencies, sweep through them, and train your ears to know what 4K sounds like, what 100 hertz sounds like, what 500 hertz sounds like. And you should link the two together. You should be like, oh, I hear this, that's 500 hertz because I've trained my ears. That is very, very helpful and you should definitely do that. But using it as a crutch and relying on it is a problem, especially with digital EQs where they have frequency analyzers. You might see that there's a boost at 1K in a vocal and you're like, oh, that should be flat. No, it shouldn't. A slight 1K boost on a vocal is actually pretty pleasurable to the ear. A lot of Neumann mics actually have a slight 1K boost in the microphone itself. And that's very pleasing in acoustic guitar and in vocals. But yet if you're just looking at it all the time and not trusting your ears, you're going to think that that's a problem when it's not. When I see my students struggling using their eyes too much as a crutch, there's two things that I like to do with them to help them through this. Number one is to just grab an EQ, sweep through the frequencies, and listen to what things sound like. Not just boosting, but also cutting. You should know what not enough 100, 500, 1K, 4K, 6K hertz sounds like just as much as too much as well. You wanna go both directions with this. Once you train your ears on this, you'll know that too much 4K on electric guitar sounds like this, and then you can grab any EQ and be able to grab that and fix it quickly. And now number two is using an analog modeled EQ. Almost every single DAW has this feature. There's tons of free analog modeled EQs out there. They don't use any sort of frequency analyzer whatsoever, and they force you to use your ears instead of your eyes. In this EQ here, when I press play, it shows me everything that's going on in the frequency spectrum. In the heavens high, in the valley low. And if you're relying on your eyes, this can get pretty stinking confusing because you're not gonna know what to boost or what to cut because you're just relying on your eyes. And if you start seeing peaks in the frequency analyzer, you might start grabbing and cutting those and that's not necessarily what you need. So grabbing an analog model EQ similar to this Poltec emulation here is super helpful because there's no analyzer there at all. It just says what the frequencies are and whether you're boosting or attenuating that frequency or boosting or cutting if you're using a different style analog EQ. Either way, there's no visual element to this that is harming you and keeping you from actually using your ears. Also, I just love the way analog modeled EQs sound. They add a bit of saturation sometimes that just is super pleasing on vocals, drums, and just about anything else. So get good with an analog modeled EQ. You're gonna love it. Now, beginner mistake number five is high passing every track in your mix. Don't get me wrong here. Cutting low frequencies and rumbles and things that just don't need to be in there is very important. But were they actually there or are you taking away some of the energy of your track? A lot of people cut vocals and acoustic guitars and sometimes even bass and a lot of other things that just might take away some of the energy from your track. Definitely try this, play with this and mess around with this. This is not a one size fits all. Sometimes I cut a ton of low end out of a vocal. Sometimes I don't cut almost anything out of a vocal. It all depends on what the track needs and the energy of the track. Having some low end rumble on things like acoustic guitar and even some electric guitar for palm mutes is something that might actually add a ton of energy to your track that otherwise you would have just eliminated. And sometimes not cutting it can cause a lot of problems and a lot of buildup in certain frequencies in the low end. So all of this to say, be intentional before you ever add a high pass filter on. Does it actually need to be eliminated or are you cutting the energy out of the track? Now, beginner mistake number six is always EQing in solo. EQ is for getting a track and shaping a track to fit in the mix. Beginners love grabbing that solo button every time they make any sort of EQ adjustment whatsoever, and this causes two problems. Number one, they're boosting frequencies and cutting frequencies that actually might not be a problem in the mix. And number two, it causes them to use very subtle moves. Sometimes being a lot more aggressive with an EQ is just what you need to get it to sit in the mix properly. Now, while the solo button is super helpful for locating those nasty resonant frequencies that you wanna eliminate with surgical EQ, it comes with its own issues as well. 
It's like you're only hearing one side of the conversation. Imagine you're hanging out with five of your best friends and you put everyone else on mute and you only listen to one friend. You're only going to get one part of the story. You're missing the full picture and now everyone's confused when you're asking questions. That analogy was a bit of a stretch, but you get the point. Now, before I get into beginner mistake number seven, make sure you stick around to the end so I can share that private link to that private vocal mixing masterclass with you. You're definitely not gonna wanna miss out on it. Now, beginner mistake number seven is getting scared to use too much. Bro, if it sounds good, it is good. I go super crazy all the time. If a vocal needs seven dB of cutting or boosting, I do it and don't even think twice about it. Remember, if it sounds good, it is good. You should see some of the EQ curves on my drums. They are super aggressive a lot of the times, but they sound fantastic. Now, this is not a substitute for poor recording. If you have a poor recorded track, no amount of EQ is ever going to fix you from that. EQ is only supposed to enhance a recording. And if you wanna know how to get great recordings, I have an entire masterclass on recording and mixing vocals, and the link is down in the description below. It's completely free, it's an hour long, and it is super, super in-depth. So you can click the link at the top of the description to watch that masterclass. Now, if you wanna know five things beginners get wrong about compression, you're gonna to wanna to click on this video right here. In that video, I go through five things beginners get wrong about compression and how that is also destroying their mixes. EQ is just one part of the process. EQ and compression go hand in hand. So make sure you click that video, I'll see you over there. And now as always, go create.